people make mistakes. The last time I saw my dad was about six months ago. Never knew where he was. I, always t I was always told that he was in the military until the age of 10 where I found out, seeing the first letter. My father has been incarcerated for 22 years now. And yeah, he's got incarcerated when I was three months, three or four months old. I don't really think about it. I just think of it as me going to visit my dad. Sometimes I try to eliminate that he's in prison. Just to make it seem like it's just where he's at, his home is at the moment. My name is Eric Benson, and I, I'm from the, originally from the Bronx, New York. I was born and raised in the Bronx. Currently in a prison, Sing Sing Correctional Facility, on a 25-year-to-life sentence for murder in the second degree. I was 20 years old when that happened. Back then, my mindset was on the streets. It was a survival tactic for me. I thought this was just the way to, this was the way to go. You know, my mother was, my mother was, you know, she did drugs, my father was in prison, so that was, you know, I thought the streets was, you know, everybody I seen around the streets was, this was normal. This was a sense of normalcy for me, and I got a, a big, a huge wake-up call. Only thing I thought about growing up in here was that one day I'll see you come through these prison walls because I wasn't out there, because I wasn't the father that I should have been. So to not see that, you know, to see that, to see you grow into the young man that you are today, you know, and uh on the right track and doing what you're supposed to do. That, that's my blessing, my miracle. You're an amazing young adult. I've always kind of accepted it, from when, even from when I found out that my father was incarcerated and I know sometimes it would bother me, like on Father's Day, where kids would talk about Father's Day, they'd join like little cards for their father and stuff, and I'd be like, oh, I don't really got a father. But my dad never gave up from the time I met him. He's just always been there, give me calls on the weekends to see if I'm okay, should check up on me. He asked if he could see my report card. He never forced me, but he always asked if I wanted to, I could bring it, we could talk about it, or if I needed help with anything. So, yeah, I would say my father is a good dad. He's and a lot of parents have been behind bars, which is not easy for a lot of parents because a lot of parents give up because they feel they have to because they're behind bars, nothing they can do, but he's been doing a lot of positive things. He's got his bachelor's, his master's inside, so he's graduated from numerous parenting classes, so hopefully they look at all the good sides and not what he did 25 years ago, so. You know, you're the, you're the reason why I went to school. I left school at 10th grade, and uh, I knew I was smart, you know, but again, I grew up in the streets. And so school was like, school wasn't, you know, a factor when I did get locked up for this. You know, my first year, you know, I got my GED when I was in Clinton. 1995, they took college out of prison. And so, you know, I put in a transfer. I came to Sing Sing in uh, July. July 3rd, 2006. So I was able to, you know, get into a lot of programs, you know, down here. And uh, one program was the Osborne Association, where I, um, I got into the parenting class. So I asked them to go see, go see your grandmother, and uh, see if she would um, allow you to be in the program. And so she took that chance with, you know, allowing you to go to the Osborne and not. You know, that was, I thank her too, every day.
things that kept me on track to not, you know, follow in my father's footsteps was basically the support from the Osborne. And they deal with kids and incarcerated parents. I've been a member for seven years in the Osborne. You know, they would help me with my father. If I had anything to talk about, they would take us to go see our fathers, take us to like little mini trips, meetings every like two weeks. I'd take the time out to talk about how they feel about their parents' side or take the time to write their parent. But yeah, so, so that kept me going and just sort of led me in a different path. Because I know over the years, through the visits, he told me his story, what he did, and I know that it hurts him every day inside. So. I don't ever want to have to go through that feeling or just being behind bars is just, I don't ever want to go through that, so. Yeah, so for like kids out there who maybe feel embarrassed about having a incarcerated parent, I would just tell them like to stay active, join programs, that's what I did. And it's probably healthier for the kid to have a relationship with that parent, even behind bars just to establish that bond with them still. And don't look at them as such, you know, this big bad wolf just because they're behind bars, so.